Well, it is good to be with you today. Um, you know, it is funny. I mean, this, is, um, this tends to be a funny Sunday uh, throughout, the, throughout the Christian world. Uh, some people get all uptight, religious, and other people kind of go the other direction. And, um, but, you know, over the years, I've been a pastor for a couple of decades now. And what began as the Sunday of the year I dreaded most has become one that I actually look forward to. There used to it just used to feel like there was so much pressure to pull Sunday, Christmas Sunday off. And after 20-some decades, I mean 20-some, it feels like 20 decades. <laughs> Jesus, not another. You, you know, after 20-some after years... Uh, of realizing he's never going to let you pull it off that well. Um, you can kind of relax. And instead of making it about you, make it about him and what he's done. And so let's, let's do that for a little while. We want to go into the Word. Uh, it be shorter today because the kids will be coming down uh, uh, pretty soon. Uh, probably about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, so can you guys hang in there that long? and? Okay, because we're going to go into the Word. And I, w- I want to give you a gift this morning. Um, um, it's the kind of gift I like to, li- uh, to give because it costs me absolutely no money. <laughs> uh, nor did it cost me anything except reading a book. But, I, but it does mean something. I want to give you a gift uh, today. Oh, by the way, so I don't get in trouble with Trevor and myself later. Uh, on the 2nd and 3rd of January, Todd Smith is coming back. We're going to have another baptism, uh, uh, two nights of baptism. So uh, let's come together, be praying ahead of that, uh, that God will do some incredible stuff for those couple of evenings together again this time. Amen. So uh, didn't you love Mary and Joseph? And I was thinking about Joseph there. He looks far less clueless than most um, young fathers I've known over the years uh, as he observes what's going on. But I want to give you a gift of a quote from Dallas Willard. Um, It begins like this. He did, speaking of God, he did all that he could do to be with us, to be one of us, to arrange for the delivery of his life to us. I love that. I love that. He did all that he could do to be with us, to be one of us, to arrange for the delivery. And so one of the things I'd like for us to begin to think of as we leave here today, maybe a little bit differently, is we're not only celebrating the delivery of a little baby, a very special baby, obviously, but this was actually God's way of delivering a gift of life to planet Earth, to those who would respond and say yes. That's what we're celebrating today, of his life to us. And is actually the, the, the next part of that quote that really got my attention. And I just meditated on for several days this past week. It must be no simple thing to make it possible for human beings to receive the eternal kind of life. No small thing. No simple thing. And I want to think about that uh, with you for a little while today, this Obviously, Dallas Willard has a wonderful way with words, and when he speaks of eternal life or life eternal, he always refers to it in the books that I've read and the talks that I've heard as the eternal kind of life. And so I thought it would be appropriate for us today as we're together remembering the delivery of this life into the earth and uh, the moment that the Lord launched this delivery into the earth and made it possible for you and me to be here today, but not just be here today, but be here today as a different type of humanity, as a redeemed and spirit-indwelt type of person, um, that we think just for a moment about this eternal kind of life. And, and so let, let's think about this together. What is the eternal kind of life? Now, most of you today, uh, that some of you are from up north, and maybe you came from backgrounds that were totally uh, disconnected from the evangelical south. But I am uh, um, uh, a member of this society, this culture. I g- was born and grew up here. I, I uh, am an evangelical um, really by birth in the natural in some ways, and that's where I came into the kingdom through 
the message uh, that, that came through the evangelical church. And uh, one thing I have noticed, so I speak of myself when I say this, one thing that I have noticed is the go-to place always when we think about what is this uh, eternal kind of life is probably John 11, 25 and 26, uh, where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And rightly so. I mean, that's pretty significant, isn't it? Uh, so let's begin there, uh, but let's not stop there. And that's the point I want to make as a beginning point today. So many people celebrating the birth of Jesus this Sunday and over the next week. So many people who have been born again into the kingdom of God through this one we're celebrating. So many people have received what in their mind is life eternal. In other words, let me put it this way, an eternal existence with God and those we love. Someday, we get to be with God and those we love forever. Someday. Now, that is true. And it is crucial. But dear God, please, let's not stop there. If that's the only thing you know of this eternal kind of life, I tell you what, that's a sad, <laughs> that's a sad place to stop. But there's something in us, you know. Uh, Paul wrote this in Ephesians 2, 4 through 5. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ even though we were dead in trespasses. And so what we want to remember as we're celebrating this Christmas season is we have not just entered into an eternal kind of life that will never end. We entered into an eternal kind of life that started and it's never going to end. You and I are already living the eternal kind of life and it's never going to end. It's not like you get to, you know, it's not like I can't wait till I die so I can, you know what I'm saying? But the tragedy for me as a pastor is to see so many people that when they entered this eternal kind of life through a profession of faith, nothing else changed in their life. They, they entered in, they prayed, they entered in, they said yes to this reality, and then nothing else changed. Their language didn't change. Their relationships didn't change. Their level of hope and expectation didn't change. And they're waiting for this vessel to die so that they can enter into what Jesus came to give them. But that's not what Paul's talking about, is it? He did, he's not going to make us alive. He made us alive when we accepted Christ. Amen? Amen. And so I want to say it this way, that this eternal kind of life is not just what we receive when we end this earthly journey, but he has made us alive to an entirely new spiritual dimension of life. And this is so crucial. See, this is what Jesus is talking about. Jesus didn't just want to get you to heaven. Do you understand that? He did not just want to get you to heaven. That's not what this, uh, this story in John 3 is about well, with Nicodemus, where we, these very famous words of Jesus, truly I tell you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now let me say something to you. That entrance was meant to take place at the very moment you said yes to Christ. That, that's not an entrance that you're waiting to die to enter into. This is an entrance that the moment you come by the grace of God to understand, he came not only as a baby, but he grew up. He grew up living a perfect life, an absolutely, utterly perfect life, something you and I can't imagine. I mean, he did not trip up once in what he said or did. He didn't trip up once in an attitude that he had. I mean, he pulled it off with utter perfection. And in the, at the end of that 33 years of living perfectly, he paid the price for all of humanity who has lived, who has lived so utterly uh, imperfectly. And boy, is that an understatement or what? 
but he paid the price for all of us. Uh, so it's not about entering. This is about entering a kingdom now. Whoever is born uh, of the flesh is flesh, but whoever is born of the spirit is spirit. So one of the things I want to remind us of this Christmas Sunday as we're celebrating and remember, if you've entered into this life, entered into this kingdom, you are now a very different species of human being. You're no longer uh, the person that you were before. You are now indwelt by the Spirit of the living God. You have been made alive in a way that you never knew before. And it's glorious. And it changes everything. Give it enough time, it'll change the way you relate to everybody in your life. Now that might take a while. Give it enough time and it'll change the way you talk. I think one of the most shocking things to people, you're not going to believe this. When I actually entered into the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven entered into me at Stony Point Baptist uh, 40 years ago. The most shocking thing to people that knew me, other than my family, I've learned to behave pretty well around them, was my language. My language changed. I had a foul mouth. Can you believe that? I was talking to Mike the other day, and uh, he, we were talking, commensurating with his old life. And, and I just looked at him and said, dude, I cannot even get my mind around that being you. Because the only Mike I know is the Mike I know who's in the kingdom and living so fully from the kingdom. That's the invitation, isn't it? That's what Jesus is talking about. He's not talking about getting the ticket punched. <laughs> He's talking about entering into this entirely new way of doing life, even while we still breathe in this body. And so that's what he's talking about. He can't even enter the kingdom. But let's go back a couple of verses and look at what he said. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, we know that Jesus went about preaching this message of the kingdom, right? That was his primary message. And his message was, the kingdom of heaven is around you. Repent. Change the way you're doing life. Change the way you're thinking. Change the direction you're going in. Repent. Turn around. Because the kingdom of heaven is now here. The kingdom of heaven now entered into the earth. Now, when did that happen? Well, it happened when he entered into this earth as a little baby. It happened in a brand new way at that time, didn't it? Uh, but here's the thing. We shouldn't be surprised at those who have not entered into this new life through Christ that they can't see what you see. Do you understand that? Try having a conversation when someone, with someone who's not born again about the kingdom of heaven. It makes no sense to them. I get that. I used to be on the other side of that line. I mean, it utterly, you cannot convince somebody of something they cannot see. Do you understand? But here's, here's the point. This eternal kind of life, it's, um, it really is a completely different life. And now you can see things you didn't see before. You can hear things you didn't hear before. You can respond in ways you couldn't respond before. Do you see that? That's what Jesus is talking about. Now, so what is the eternal kind of life? You've been made alive to an entirely new spiritual dimension of life. I want to ask you today, is that your reality? I just want to pause for a minute and ask you that. It's just one human being to another. You, you know, there's a really interesting place where Paul, I think it's at the, toward the end of 1 Corinthians, he said, uh, boy, this is not your normal Christ, uh, uh, Christmas message right here, so parenthesis, then I'm going to get back uh, <laughs> kind of to the flow. Um, but there's this place where Paul actually exhorts the Corinthians, test yourself to see if you're in the faith. I think it would be a great day, the Sunday before Christmas, to take a moment and test ourselves to see if we're in the faith. Because Jesus plainly said that there would be a group of people who will stand before him, uh, you know, at that time, and he'll look at them and say, I never knew you. 
Now, who's that going to be? And they're going to be shocked and say, well, wait a minute. I was part of the charismatic church. I was part of the deliverance team. I cast out devils in your name. Are you kidding me? Is this a joke? He's going to say, away from me, I never knew you. I don't know about you, but that's sobering to me. Should be sobering to you as an individual, and if you're a preacher, it darn well better be sobering to you. Because uh, you need to be challenging folks once in a while to say, and this is a great day to do that. Let me challenge you. Let me challenge you this way. Jesus said that if you're born again, you will actually enter into a new realm, a new kingdom, a new rule. Now, what that means is, now Colossians, he tells us that we've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So what that means is what used to rule me no longer rules me. The kingdom that used to rule over my life, it no longer rules over my life anymore. So let's test ourselves today. Is that your reality? Is that your experience? Can you see a difference? Can you see a change? Well, let's use the second test. Can you see the kingdom? Do spiritual things make sense to you? When you read the scripture, is it alive to you? Does your heart burn at the name of Jesus? That's a good test, isn't it? It's a wonderful test to say, did something really change or not? You know, I mean, after 40 years, I can look back and say, something did change. Now, I got a feeling I'm a whole lot behind the curve compared to what my wife would like. I get really disappointed with myself once in a while. I don't know about you. I mean, I get like really, really down about myself once in a while. But the one thing I cannot say is that I haven't changed. I can say I'm a disappointed, disappointing and disappointed believer today. I cannot say that's, in, I can say that's inconsistent with, with who I am now. But the one thing I cannot say is I haven't changed. Because I have changed. Quite radically, as a matter of fact. Right? Now, after 40 years, you'd expect it. But the fact is, after one, you should expect to see some movement. Amen? All right, that good? I mean, it's not like typical Christmas stuff, is it? But you had the video, and that was fun. <laughs> Didn't you enjoy that? <laughs> okay. Well, let's go on, though. Let's go on. Um, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. Now, I want to stop just a minute, because so far, what, 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 what have we said about this eternal kind of life? Number one, it is a reality, and a glorious reality, and one that we should celebrate and be aware of, um, that you're, if you're a believer in Christ, you're never going to die. You are not going to die. As Alan said, uh, it, somebody may have to tell you that your body quit working. <laughs> You know, you may have to pause for a minute and realize that you're no longer breathing. But who you are, the reality of who you are, you're not going to die. You'll transition into a new way of existing for a little while until you get that new body. And then you'll transition into a whole new way of existing, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, so we know that's true. And we also know uh, what we've just seen is this eternal kind of life uh, brings about a radical transformation in those who have entered into it. We become a new kind of person, a new kind of human being, right? Um, but, it, but, but what I find, this is really what I find uh, interesting. Uh, if you look in the Scripture, and somebody can come up to me later and correct me, and that's fine. I don't, don't, don't do it publicly. I'll repent next week if you, if you show me this, I promise. I've got a history of that, of repenting publicly. Uh, but, but this is the only place I have found in Scripture where Jesus or anybody else specifically said this is eternal life. 
This is the, this is, it's not that the other stuff's not true, but this is like the definition. This is eternal life. This is the eternal kind of life that they may know you, the only true God and the one that you have sent, Jesus Christ. Now, you know, the understanding of this verse turns completely on one little word, doesn't it? Which one? Let me circle it so we're all on the same page. It all turns on that one little word. Now, what, what you understand to be meant by that one word will define what you believe this verse is saying. So let me help you just a little bit today. Biblically speaking, that word is not talking about noggin stuff. Dude, I'm telling you, man, this is a relational word. It's the word that's used, if I could, you know, of course I, uh, you know, I'm out of the box now, so I, uh, right, I mean, two weeks ago I kind of like left all dignity behind, right, so in terms of trying to be real delicate. <laughs> um, li listen, this is the word that's used when it says that a man knew a woman, if you get my drift. Nod like this, adults, if you know what I'm talking about. It's that word. This is a relational word. This is an intimate word. So it's not like know about word. This is not talking about know about. This is eternal life that they may know about you, the only true God. This is, the, this is eternal life that they may be able to just quote all kinds of scriptures about you. Look at your neighbor and say, that ain't that. This is, a no, this, is a, this is an intimate word. Let me tell you something. I know my wife, and she knows me. I moved on from a while ago. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, nobody knows me better than Kelly. And I'll bet you at this point, after a lot of four decades together, nobody knows her better than me. You understand? That's what we're talking about. Now think about this. That's what Jesus describes as eternal life. That's what Jesus seems to be laying as the primary reason for coming into this earth. That human beings may enter into, what? Well, let's put it this way, the, the Passion Version says it this way, eternal life means to know and experience you as the only true God and to know and experience Jesus Christ as the one whom you have sent. That's eternal life. That's eternal life. So we could say it this way. Uh, birthed anew into an interpersonal relationship with God. Now, I know that's challenged. I know that we're a broken people. I know that some people, uh, your childhood was such a dysfunctional mess that you have a real hard trial. You, you've got a lot of trouble relating to people. <laughs> And you have a lot of trouble relating to the Lord himself. And so to even use this kind of language is a little bit scary, frightening. But can I bring a witness to say something to you today? He can fix that. Because you and I both know in your heart of hearts, the one thing that's true about you, human being, is that you long for somebody to know you. You long for it. You're dying for it. You're desperate for somebody to really know you. And you're dying on in your inside to really know someone else. And we get to experience that with limited degrees with other human beings in marriage and as, you know, with our families and so forth. But can I tell you there is a depth that you and I are never going to know in human relationship that we've been invited into with the Lord. Does that make, do you understand? We've been invited into this thing. It's not about getting smarter. It's about walking closer. That's our invitation. I find it really interesting that Jesus could have said anything. This is eternal life, that you'll live forever. We know it's true, but that's not what he said. This is eternal life. You'll be a new type of person. We know that's true, but that's not what he singled out. This is eternal life that you can now enter into an intimate, true, real relationship with the creator of the universe. And that emptiness, that ache, that desire on the inside of you, that no human being, you know, 
I don't know that this applies to any of you uh, at all, you know. And um, but you you'll know people that it's that it's true of, won't you? Uh, you know, there are people who have been through hundreds of partners trying to fill something on the inside. They just can't find the end of it. This one didn't do it. That one didn't do it. Do you understand? It's because the longing is for the one who created us. He knows that's the greatest longing that we have. I mean, one of the great dangers I think we have, and the Lord has really been working in my heart about this recently, because, you know, I am, after all, a charismatic pastor. Uh, I don't have a card, but it's true. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a good one, but I am one. And, um, and we do really, as a species, love miraculous things. We really do love stuff you can't explain, humanly speaking. It just, like, makes us happy. You know, you know what I'm saying? It just makes us so happy. Uh, you know, miracles and that kind of stuff, it's wonderful and glorious. Um, but I tell you something, the Lord has had me praying recently, and Alan touched on it again this morning. He just keeps touching that nerve. I'd give it all up. I'd give all hope of that up for him to satisfy one thing, this intensely deep longing in my heart to go into a relationship with him. Yeah, I've got a prophetic word. Uh, actually, Brother Scott from uh, the local church down here, we've been praying together for several years. He texted me today. This is the kind of, this is the kind of text you'd like to get if you're a charismatic preacher. <laughs> it's the kind you like to get if you're anything, if you believe in the word. Another prophetic word given to you is about to come to pass. That's a good text, 709. Now, I got a book of prophetic words. I do, don't I? I mean, the thing is, like, I, move, I had to move it from one binder to a bigger binder. Elizabeth keeps populating it with ones I forgot we had. But you know what I found myself thinking about that? I walked back upstairs today, Alan, and got, I got that word to Taylorsville from 1991 out of the binder and folded it up and put it in my Bible so I'd have it today. Also the one to 2006 to Taylorsville. Um, but, you know, I'm realizing another prophetic word given to you. That sounds like one. I mean, I'm not the sharpest guy in the room, so help me. Does that sound like one to you? Like there are ten puppies here. You get to pick one of the ten puppies. There's a bowl of fruit. Steve, you can have one. Uh, you understand? What's that? Well, yeah, brother, you better believe that's the way I'm receiving it. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh, amen. Amen. That's right, exactly. Now, you heard what Andy said, right? Uh, what he said was, one now and more to come. Sure. Absolutely. So I'm not thinking about forgetting the other ones. But, you know, I could not help myself, even in the prayer room back there with other people, to say, well, the one I'll, I'm asking for today is one given by Jeff in 2011. Your intimacy with the Father will grow richer and richer and sweeter and sweeter. Now listen, if I got to pick one to tap into today, if it's my choice, that's the one. It's not the one that somebody gave me that I believe is a true word that I'll have a season where every prayer I pray publicly, God's going to answer. I'm saying, I want that one too, Lord, but not nearly as bad as I want this intimacy with you that grows richer and richer and sweeter and sweeter. I want to ask you something. Is that because I'm such a good guy? That I would think like that? No, it's not. She knows me. Is that, is that because I'm like selfless or that's the right thing? No. God has put a longing in my heart. 
And I am no different than you. I just happen to be in touch with that longing. And this is the reality. That's eternal life. See, what's happened is something has happened in this new creation called Steve. And this hunger for relationship with him just cannot be quenched. No matter what level of presence we experience together in a service in a given time, it can't be quenched. Why? Because eternal life means to know and experience Him. It's relational. I got a feeling I'm not the only one. What is eternal life? The eternal kind of life. It is without any question, wonderfully. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Wonderfully, I'm celebrating the fact that I am an eternal being. I love the idea that uh, not necessarily this old body, I'm, you know, can get pretty weary of it, but but this spirit man within me is never going to die. I have an eternal destiny that has already begun. Right? I love that. That's eternal life. Look at your neighbor and say, that is the eternal kind of life. I've also been made alive to to become an entirely uh, new person. I've entered into a, uh, a new spiritual dimension of life. I love that. I celebrate that. There's nothing like that. But let's not stop there and sell ourselves short. Amen? Because you can. We've been birthed anew into an interpersonal relationship with God. And of all that eternal life is, I tell you right now, that's the most wonderful, the most important. He did all he could to be with us, to be one of us to arrange for the delivery of his life, of his eternal life, of the eternal kind of life to us. And he did that for you. And so I want to ask you today, have you entered into that life? Have you entered into that life? Are you living from that kingdom? I want to ask you to consider that today. Just ask you to stand. It's about to get real exciting. We're going to we're going to wrap up with like this really incredibly positive tune that will even make the most unsaved amongst us real happy. <laughs> uh, you, um, but before we go there, let's just pause for a minute. Hit the pause button on this crazy, busy, anxiety and producing life that we are caught in. This hamster wheel of life in America. Let's pause a minute and just ask the Lord to search our hearts. Let's use this as an opportunity to remember why he came and then ask ourselves honestly and truly, have I really responded to why he came? Can we do that? Before any music, let's just pause. Bow our heads. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to make any movement. This is you and the Lord. This is you and your God.
Now I want to make an invitation to you. This is an invitation that may be unique to us today. Um, because you can actually, just by the timing of the Lord, you can actually be born again, go back there to the back, get on a set of scrubs that we will provide with disposable underwear and everything. Come back up here. Be baptized this day. You don't have to wait till next week to say yes to walking with the Lord and baptism. You, you can be like that Ethiopian eunuch who said, there's some water. What keeps me from being baptized? That can be you today, and I want to invite you to do that. We're about to open this altar area. We're going to have a couple of prayer pods. That means groups of little, not little people, but little groups of people. <laughs> be right over there. I told you we'd get happy in a moment. We're going to have, they will pray with you if you want somebody to walk you through that. They will be there to pray for you. They'll pray for your healing. They will pray for whatever it is you want prayer. We're going to have people, um, some of them are little people, but they're going to be over there to pray for you. And over here, we're going to have a baptismal made ready for you. Some of you today, you can be born again, enter into the kingdom of heaven and be baptized according to the command of Jesus this very day. Amen? I think that's really cool. That was very polite of you, and I appreciate it very much. <laughs> but here's the other thing I want to say to you today, if I, if, if I could, because we got, you know, I'm going to spend another two minutes, and you're getting out early. One of the things the Lord has... I believe taught us or spoken to us around here, and I am amazed, is that baptism, uh, this act, this physical act does not have to be held to this one thing of, of, of I've become a, a believer, therefore. It's a touch point. It's a point of faith engaging God. And I want to say this to you today. If you are a believer, but you don't feel that connection, that reality of being a new type of person, if you have a deep insensitivity to the things of the Spirit, you can be baptized today as an act of saying, God, I'm going under these waters, and I pray I come up sensitive to you in a way I've never known before. You bought it. You paid for it. I want to have it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But, but, but also, wh what about those who just feel so completely disconnected and broken relationally? What a wonderful opportunity to say, Lord, I'm going into those waters today as a prayer, as an invitation that I could enter into a new kind of relationship with you, the one that you bought and paid for. Amen. So we want to offer that to you today. There's the information. Uh, you just come right up here if you'd like to be baptized for any reason and see Michael. He will take it from there. You'll get a number. You'll go back and get your clothes and... Uh, I tell you, you'll be out of here quicker than you, quicker than you realize, but it's not, we're not doing it efficiently for that purpose. Amen. And we do ask this, that you would just, um, if you remain in, that, that you would, uh, I think there's another one, yeah. Uh, if you remain in today as we begin baptizing, uh, that you just remain prayerful. Because it's a precious moment for those who are being baptized for whatever reason. Amen. All right. Now, I want you to do this for me. Would you look at your neighbor and say, all right. This is going to be whiplash if you're not careful. Because you're about to go happy. In fact, look at him again and say, I'm serious. If you don't pull out of this place quick, you're going to get whiplash. Amen. I warned you. Let's celebrate his coming. Amen.
we bless you today, and we pray that you'll have a very Merry Christmas. God bless you as you go, and just remember to be in prayer as the ones come for baptism and for the prayer pods. Bless you.